Yeah. Amen. And I love that song that said, I done cleaned up my house and then kicked the, devil, the out. devil out. Put the devil out. God is stretching out in me. Amen. Well, if no more has the talk, we call in El Rodney to come and review us. Amen. Thank God for you this morning. Amen. Thank you. Blessing us. Thank you. 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 Thank Praise God. Blessed be a blessing. Yes, sir. <laughs> Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Amen, right? Good to be in the house. Good to be in the house. Yes, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is a good morning. Amen. It is a good morning. It is a day. I'm going to ask a few questions and get out of the way. This lesson, good stuff, anticipating redemption. Yes, yes. And to me, that speaks about a hope. Oh, right? yes. Oh, Jesus. Got to have. Uh, this is Romans chapter mm -hmm. 8, verses 18 through 27. Mm -hmm. I'm just going after that, continuing to open up the scriptures. Uh, so this lesson continues. This, this lesson here continues to work our way through the book of Romans. Yes which is very important to understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, we left off last week at Romans chapter 6, verse 14, and we're picking up today at chapter 8, verse 18. But in between these verses, Paul started an intense conversation that we must touch yes. to give this text true justice. Mm -hmm. We need our Bibles again. But we begin our lesson at Romans 8.18, mm -hmm. which Paul says, I reckon or, or conclude, the word reckon, you can say conclude, that what? Suffering. Suffering of what? Of this present time. This current this current present time. time. Paul acknowledges that the people are going through real problems, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. That was a word of comfort. So mm -hmm. Paul's Paul, you know, he acknowledged, you know, the sufferings that we're dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes on to say in verse 18 that though we are going through, though what we are going through is real, these sufferings are not worthy mm -hmm. to be compared to what? The glory. The glory. Glory, which which shall be what? Revealed. revealed. Yeah. Shall yeah. be revealed. Yeah. In who? In us. us. Mm. Paul's right there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. That's uh Thank you, Lord. This uh, I got it written down. Now now is where the previous verses are necessary. Mm -hmm. I ended up reading the whole book of reading and studying the whole book of Romans mm -hmm. to make sure I understood this correctly. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm just going to touch on, so in seminary school, I didn't go to seminary school, but I heard a lot of people talk about it. Uh, they, they learned something, they call it exergesis and eisergesis. Mm -hmm. Eisergesis, anybody ever heard of those two? Mm -hmm. Exergesis, your son. Yeah. Well, I, I studied this one. Okay. I took the Bible in college. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and see, I didn't realize that Okay, so so okay, so exergesis is that there's two different ways that people kind of interpret the scripture, and, and this is this is pretty very important. Mm -hmm. uh, exegesis is the legitimate the, the, the definition, the legitimate interpretation of a text. It reads out of the text what the authors meant to convey. Eisegesis reads into the text what the reader or interpreter wishes to find or thinks is there. In other words, the first one, exegesis, allows us to agree with the words, while eisegesis seeks to make the word agree with us. You understand? So, so a lot of times we have a revelation 
and we read the Bible, but we make it agree with our revelation. Mm -hmm. Right. Instead of just reading the Bible for what it is, what the author is intending to say. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's a very the, the latter part. The eisegesis is a very common practice. Mm-hmm. But we should get our revelation from the Bible, mm -hmm. right? Yes, we get revelations from one another. Mm -hmm. I get, you know, I'm inspired by a lot of people who may, may speak a revelation. Mm -hmm. But if I hear a revelation, I'm going to go back to the Word. Yes. Right? Make mm -hmm. sure that it's lining up with the Word. And that's where I'm going to get my, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so revelation of the text is secondary to understanding the intent of the text, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so exegesis is the proper way to teach or preach the word. In other words, we just we, we're trying to see what the writer intended to say. So in this respect, uh, we're talking about Paul said, "For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us." Mm -hmm. And in reading um, these the scriptures. I submit to you that the us at the end of verse 18, Paul was referring to Hebrews, Paul's brethren. Mm -hmm. That's the us that he was referring to. When you go back, mm -hmm. when you go back and read, okay, so anybody with their Bibles, go right quick, just, just go right quick. Go to, Rome, go to Romans 7 and 1. And somebody just read that verse. This, this is in between last week's lesson and our lesson today. Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. So the first first part of that verse says, do you not know who? Brethren. Brethren. Then he clarified who he's talking to. In parentheses it says, for I speak to those who know the law. So Paul started a conversation to the Hebrews. And I talked last week a little bit about how Paul was talking to the, to the Gentile churches, but there was two different conversations. You had the Gentiles, who would be like new converts, who had, and you had to have a basic surface conversation with them, right? Mm -hmm. Just about faith and grace and, yeah. and you know, uh, yeah. saved by faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. But the Hebrews, who already knew the law, was a different conversation. Mm -hmm. And Paul was concerned about everybody. He wasn't overlooking them. So Paul was talking to them, right? So this, what we're reading, Paul is still talking to the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. He says specifically, I speak to those who know the law. He's talking to them right there. Mm -hmm. And he's going to go back and talk to the Gentiles in chapter 11, verse 13. He's going to talk to them. So he's going back and forth talking to different people. Just read the whole, you know, you read the whole book, you'll, you'll see that, right? Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> uh, Paul had to increase, so Paul was talking, there were different conversations between the Hebrews and the Gentiles. Uh, the Hebrews, who were very knowledgeable of scripture and law, Paul had to increase their understanding in the law that they are, in the word that they already knew. Right, so they were two different and necessary conversations because God loves everybody. Yes, sir. Right? Yes. So Paul starts a distinct conversation to the Gentiles in chapter 11, 13, uh, go read it, Paul goes back and forth, trying to make sure both Jews and Gentiles in Rome were ministered to in this letter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now back to our lesson. Uh, uh, continuing to exegesis, <laughs> or to understand what is written first. Mm -hmm. Verse 18 said, uh, Paul said, to his Hebrew brethren that the sufferings of the past and present time won't be able to compare to the glory which, which shall be revealed in us, which originally meant the Hebrews, Jews first. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we read it and we do get something out of it. I'm just talking about we have to understand the intent first, right, so we can prop, so that the text makes sense, mm -hmm. right? It just make, make, it makes sense, and then we, you know, we, we know God is speaking to us too. Mm -hmm. All right, so verse 19 goes on to say, that the earnest or intense what? Expectation. Expectation of what? Awaits the revealing. Of the, of the, of the creature. Creation. Right. Creature would be better translated as creation. Creation. Mm -hmm. Other translations like the NIV and many other translations create, uh, translate this word creation. So this 
creation is waiting for what? Verse 19. Manifestation, Manifestation of who? Or, or revealing of the sons, sons of God. This is also referring to Paul's brethren. Right? Paul's talking to them. He's trying to increase them with what they already know. Right? He's meeting them where they are. He said, okay, Gentiles, hold on. I'm going to talk to my Hebrew brothers for a minute. Right? And then I'm going to come back to you. And he goes back and forth. So in this conversation, he's still talking to the Hebrews. Uh, so he says, so this, I said, this is also referring to Paul's brethren, the Hebrews. And, and, and all through, the, through, the, through these, uh, through Romans, when, when Paul mentions brethren, mm -hmm. he's talking to the Hebrews. He's talking to his family, right? Kinsmen. That's really, it's not really talking about, so I know we always read this spiritually, but that's not really what he was saying. Mm -hmm. You know, even though, like I said, we, we, this is our culture. We can't make the Bible fit our culture, right? It was different back then. So, okay, and, and, you know, so, so, uh, so he's referring to, he's referring to the Hebrew brothers. Uh, this is also referring to Paul's brethren, the Hebrew, who were called to show God to the world, mm -hmm. to be a light to the Gentiles, Isaiah 49 and 6. Yes. Uh, now, of course, all who believe are the children of God, Right? But Paul was talking to a people who called themselves the chosen elect, sons of God, etc. Okay, all right. So Paul said in verse 20 that the creature or creation was made subject to what? Vanity. Vanity. For no purpose. And this was an interesting verse. I had to really, really, this was kind of hard to understand. Uh, but, but the creature was made subject to vanity or no purpose. Not what? Willingly. Not willingly, mm -hmm. but by reason of yeah. Yeah. him who hath what? Yeah. Now the him was God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The him was God who subject him to, to what? The same, the, same the, same hope. Hope. the same hope. What that's really saying is Salvation. God created man to need hope. Mm -hmm. That's really what that's saying. Mm -hmm. God created man to need hope. Hope. Okay. Or we'd be empty, right? We'd be vain, vanity, right? That's just, okay. So because the creature of creation itself shall be, verse 21, shall be what? Delivered from the bondage of corruption. Corruption. The creation shall be delivered from the bondage mm -hmm. Of corruption mm -hmm. into what? Glory. Glorious liberty, Glorious liberty. Glorious liberty. Glorious liberty. Glorious liberty. of the God. Of God. God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brand back to the brethren. That's you know the the liberty of the church. Everything the the like Romans one sixteen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. Mm -hmm. But to the Jew first, first. then to the Greek, mm -hmm. right? The Gentile. Mm -hmm. So, so God called Israel, the Jews, Hebrews, to be a light to the world. He gave them a law, and the law was supposed to show the world God. That was the that was their culture. God chose a people. <clears throat> this is important so that we we understand the foundation, yes. right? Yes. It's the foundation of what we believe. God chose a people. He chose a man. And his descendants was going to show God to the world. It was going to be a light to the Gentiles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is the foundation of what our job is. Right? Yes. We, God, so through Jesus, now we, as spiritual children, mm -hmm. we are to show God to the world. Mm -hmm. Right? But this is a structure there. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, so verse 22 says, we, talking about the Hebrews again, we know that the whole creation, what? Groans. Groans. And travails. I mean, that, uh, uh, how? Together. Together, right? In pain, right? In pain. Uh, okay, I'll read. 
and pain, but e e each one individually? Together. Together. Yeah. That's, that's, he's saying the whole creation grown and trailed it in pain together until when? Yes. Yeah. Until now. Okay, uh, verse 23. And not only they, but who? Oh, Talk about the Hebrews, right? Talk about us, the chosen. So called yeah. chosen. Yeah, the chosen. Which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Spirit. Mm -hmm. Right? Gospel went to the Jews first. Mm -hmm. But we can apply this to us because we have the we have the fruits of the Spirit ourselves. But as far as what Paul was saying, he was talking to mm -hmm. his brethren, right? Back in that time, we have the first fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are also groaning and travailing in pain. Yes. Okay. Uh, he goes on to, to say, even we ourselves do what? Verse 23. He said uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the middle of verse 23, even we ourselves groan, groan, groan. within ourselves, ourselves mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm. Waiting for what? Redemption. Redemption. Now he's speaking spiritual, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the words to wit are actually italicized, meaning that they weren't they were added to give clarity. They were mm -hmm. they were just put there to give clarity. So uh, it says we groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, mm -hmm. uh, the redemption of what? Of our body. Of our body. Right. Now this is. This mm -hmm. is the body as in the collective mm -hmm. of a people, mm. right? That's, that's, this is what he's saying. In the redemption of our body, this, this is what he's saying. Redemption of us as a whole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We groan, waiting for the adoption. Because yeah. now, now he's getting into the spiritual part because we got to have, it's talking about anticipation. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 24. Uh, <clears throat> what I got down here, this is the body, Thomas the Jews said, they were God's chosen people. They have the first fruits of the what? They have the first fruits of the spirit. The first fruits of the spirit. spirit. I guess I skipped it some. Oh no, I went back to verse 23. I was tying it in. They have the first they have the first fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 24 says, But well, we are saved by what? Hope. Right. Hope. We're saved by hope. We're not saved by our bloodline. No. Nope. Right? Mm -hmm. We're not saved by our culture. Mm -hmm. We're not saved by nothing else. We're saved by what again? Hope. 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 Now, if you see hope, is that hope? No. Nope. 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 <laughs> Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hope for. Hope for. Hope for. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. So I use the example of this poor people's hope, faith would be the material. Right? Because faith is a substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen, or what I can't explain to you. Okay, all right. Uh, so when we, when we hope for something, we get it right then, verse 25. Not no. He said we wait for it with what? Patience. Patience. Likewise, what helps us with our infirmities or weaknesses? Spirit. 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 What spirit is that? Holy, Holy spirit. spirit, right? Holy spirit. Yes. Do we know how to pray as we ought? No. Verse 26. No. So who makes intercession for us? Spirit. 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 Holy Spirit. And I'm glad for that. Right? He, he steps in the gap. We don't know how to pray as we ought to. But God knows. Uh, and, and so the Holy Spirit steps in with what? Verse 26 to end. Groanings. Groanings which cannot be what? Mm. Amen. Verse 27. Who searches the heart? God does. God does. Right? God knows what is in the heart. The mind. The mind of the spirit. Of the spirit. Yes. I'm trying to cut. Okay, we're about to 
But because God makes intercession for who? Saints. The saints. The saints. Us. Right? Yes. According to God's will. Will. Will, of God. will of God. Amen. Where do we find the will of God? In his word. In his word. <laughs> In his word. Yes. In God's word, we know how to, what I call, in the meantime, anticipate our redemption, yes. which is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, but that is our hope. Anticipating redemption, right? We got to have a hope, like Dad was saying, yes. and we got to know how, you know, to hope, yes. right? We, we don't hope with, uh, like, in fear and anxious, mm -hmm. right? We hope in faith and, and, and confidence yes. by just taking God at his word. Yes. Yeah. And, and there's peace, great peace in that. Yes. Any other thoughts or comments? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father God, we thank you for thank what you're you. doing by your spirit, Father. Amen. We thank you for your words. We thank you. Amen. We thank you that Jesus Christ is, is our anchor yes. the hope, God. We thank you that we can trust. We can take you at your word. Thank you. you are doing what you said you were going to do. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank, thank you for what you're doing by your spirit. We were constantly praying for the sick and the shut. Yes. We thank you, Father, for your work. You're working in the bodies of your people. Yes. We thank you, Father, that, that by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. Yes. Take you at your word. We thank you, Father. Yes. We thank you for the word that's coming forth. Yes. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. By your spirit, for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.